Hey everyone, this is Josh Justice, aka Coding It Wrong, and I wanted to do a quick screencast this morning to share with you what I think is the most productive way to create rich front-end applications backed by APIs. Now, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but in order to make my point, I need to show you what the alternative is. Now, GraphQL, as far as I've heard, is a great technology, and Apollo is a great company and set of tools for the front-end and for the back-end of GraphQL. I definitely recommend them if you need to use GraphQL. But GraphQL has some inherent things that make it slower and a bit less productive. Let's take a look at what I mean. So in this GraphQL tutorial, we have a mutation here to create a link in a bookmark or a link tracking application. It just has a description and a URL field. But in order to get these saved, there's some duplication. The description field is repeated one, two, three, four times, and same for the URL. That's not huge, but that is a lot of duplication for the simplest possible record you could think of. Now, if you're just creating the record, the code is pretty simpler to do so. But if you want to actually dynamically update your front-end application when a record is created like you would, then things get a little more tedious. Let's take a look. So our command here to create to run the mutation itself is pretty straightforward. We run the create link mutation with the passed in variables, but then we have to implement an update hook. We take in the created link, or I think that's the created link, I'm not quite sure from the naming. Um, we read the all links query, we push the create link onto the all links array that's there, and then we write that query back. So as far as I can tell, this is manually updating the results of a query that's stored locally, doing that by hand. That seems tedious and it seems prone to error. Um, it would be great if a library could handle it for you. And that's exactly what I've experienced in the Rails and Ember worlds. That's what makes me, it hard for me to get excited about GraphQL when I've seen how much simpler things can be. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I've created a sample application here, just an empty Rails backend and Ember frontend that are already connected to one another to, to talk to one another. So we can go ahead and get started. So Rails and Ember both provide generator commands to create uh, classes and files for you. So in Rails, we can use do Rails G to generate a model. We'll call the model bookmark because the name link is actually a reserved word in JSON API, so we'll call it bookmark. And we have a URL field of type string and a description field of type string as well. So Rails will create these files for us, and then we'll be able to migrate the database afterwards to set up the database tables, to store the data, and we'll be ready to go. Take just a minute on my computer here. There we go. So we'll run Rails DB migrate, and that'll create that for us. And then we'll be able to go into the Rails console to create this data. We don't need to use a database client. We can just use the Rails console. So we do bookmark.create, and we pass in the URL. We'll do my website and a description of coding it wrong. So that creates the record for us, and we're good to go. Now we're using a Rails library called JSON API Resources to handle a lot of the web service plumbing for us. It creates another custom generator called JSON API Resource. So we create a bookmark resource. The resource class defines kind of the rules and public interface to this object. So what we're gonna to wanna to do on the bookmark resource is define the attributes that are available for the world at large. It's the URL and the description. We also need to make a controller file, um, but we don't need to put any specific contents in there, we can just call it uh, bookmarks controller, and we'll inherit from our application controller, which we've set up in advance to inherit from a JSON API resources base class and skip some protections that aren't required for APIs. All right, so we've got our controller, and the last thing we need to do is set it up in a route. Let's make sure I type this in the right way. JSON API resources is another helper method we have specific to JSON API bookmarks. And we'll run Rails routes just to make sure the route is showing up correctly for us. It's going to give us a list of all the routes in our application, and we can see that we can get bookmarks or post bookmarks, yeah, get slash bookmarks to get our bookmarks. So we're good to go. So let's start our Rails server, and then we'll switch over to another terminal uh, and go to the front end folder to get things going on the Ember side. So Ember will let us generate a model named bookmark as well. It's gonna create it in the models folder and then we're gonna to need to add the attributes onto the model class ourselves in Ember. Give this a second on my machine. Okay, there's our file and now we say we have a URL field that's a data store attribute and we have a description field that's also a data store attribute. So that is now defined and declared for us. Now we're going to generate 
a route at the index of our application. If you've used any routing library, you're familiar with being able to, being able to run code when you get to a route. In this case, we're going to create a model hook that, that run, loads models for us when we get to that route. We access this.store, the data store that's already available for us. We do find all bookmark, and then we return this as the data to be made available. Now we'll update our index template. We're going to use uh, Ember helpers to iterate through each model as bookmark. Did I type that in right? I did not. Yeah, we did. Okay, great. A little font craziness there. So we're going to put a header on here that says bookmarks. Then in here, for each one, we're going to do maybe an H2. We're going to link to the bookmark URL, and the, the content of the link will be the bookmark description. With this, I think we should be good to go. Let's load the page and take a look. Oh, I need double curlies there. That's what it was. Reload the page. Our bookmarks is coming up, and coding wrong is coming up with a link to the page. If we go to the network tab and switch to XHR, we can see that a request was made to bookmarks, look at those 3,000 bookmarks, and our data was returned. So that's great, but the example I showed that I didn't like was updating data instead of viewing it. So how can we update our bookmarks? Well, let's get into that. Let's create a form here, just a really quick, ugly one. We use Ember's input helper to dynamically bind the data to our controller that we're on. Value equals URL, we'll save this to a field called URL. And then here, actually, let's move this heading down here. Create bookmark. And then we'll do description. Input value equals description. And then for this button, we're going to do an action. Call it create bookmark. So we'll wire that up in just a minute. So to create that action, we need to create a controller, also named index. Controller is kind of an old server-side sounding word, and mostly in Ember you can use components, but for the simplicity of this demo, we're just going to use a controller. So we create an actions object here that all the actions are defined on, and we create a create bookmark method. And so what we're going to do is get this.store again. We're going to call create record mark, bookmark, and then we're going to pass in the fields for it. Title is going to uh, no, not title. The URL is going to be this.url because that on the controller is where that data is stored from the form. Description is going to be this.description. Okay, so we get the bookmark object from that, and then we call bookmark.save. And with that, we should be good to go. So let's let's see if we've got it. Reload the page here. On the URL, we say let's say link to. Big Nerd Ranch, where I work. Big Nerd Ranch. And let's see if I got this right. We click Create. And sure enough, we're good to go. I'm actually a little bit surprised because I usually have some typos. So we can see Big Nerd Ranch link is showing up here. And if we look here at this request, yeah, there we go. So it posted, when we called save, it posted the slash bookmarks. It passed this data that in the JSON API format that we needed. And then response was fine. And we so let's look at a few other things that we did and didn't have to do. So notice in our template, we didn't need to uh, do anything other than just continue to load the models from here. And in the routes, we're still just calling this store find all bookmark. We're not having to do any updates when we save it. Just in our controller, we just call bookmark.save. And that saves the bookmark in our local identity map, a place where these records are stored, as well as sending it back to the server. And so that way, the data shows up in the template automatically. So this is a more declarative approach, approach where we write the minimum code we need to express what we want to accomplish, and the libraries handle it for us. Uh, Ember and Rails are able to accomplish this because they're based on the JSON API standard that clearly connects everything together, and then Ember data that's set up to provide a lot of these facilities for us. Now, there might be simpler ways to create trivial applications, but if you want to be productive at creating full end-to-end -end applications that have rich front ends and data stored in consistent relational back ends, Rails and Ember provide a great way to do so. I hope this has demonstrated just how productive you can be with these tools. There's plenty of pros to GraphQL and a more statically typed approach for sure, but I think it's important to consider the productivity that comes from taking a lightweight approach like this. So please think about it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.